We pride ourselves on our legal system. We know we should be proud because foreigners choose to come here to use it. They do so knowing that the judge before whom they appear cannot be bribed or threatened or bullied into doing anything other than applying the law. That sense of integrity extends throughout the system, not just for those who use it, but among those who work within it and try to preserve its dignity and efficacy. As a result, our courts dispense justice with a degree of equity that means they are still considered among the fairest in the world. We are in danger of taking this inheritance for granted. Great damage has already been done. Our legal system is regularly threatened and often wholly unsupported by those whose duty it is to protect it. Changes in its function and its funding have gouged chunks out of the high legal principles that we presumed were inviolable. Access to justice for all, no matter what your background or your bank balance. A high quality judiciary, both to enforce the law and to make it. A fair, swift and equal hearing. We may believe that we are a long way away from the corrupted legal systems that encourage foreigners to litigate in our courts rather than their own, where only money or political favor, favor can ensure your freedom or a favorable ju judgment. We would be mistaken. While the legal system is in need of reform, the cumulative effect of poorly targeted funding cuts over several decades has seriously compromised the criminal law and threatened the principle of good and fair justice both for victims and defendants. Access to the family and civil courts for those without means is now skeletal. Falling pay and overwhelming workloads have meant that finding new judges is as difficult as keeping the ones we already have, something made no easier by public attacks from those who should know better. The law, and by extension the country, is threatened by an insidious form of corruption that is just as damaging as the more obvious kind, the gradual but irreparable erosion in trust in our legal system, and its ability to dispense justice in a situation against is forgive me, its ability to dispense justice is a situation against which we must all protect ourselves, for should we slip further into it, all of us will bear the cost. Lawyers often say the law is important even to those who un are unlikely to set foot in a courtroom because, as the truism goes, none of us know what life might throw at us. Any of us may become the unexpected victim of a terrible crime or a false accusation. But the law's reach is far wider than this. The decisions made in courts across our country touch our daily lives somehow no matter how far removed we think we might be or whether we notice. Our ability to buy and sell and to invest are made possible by a legal system that is trusted to enforce a contract fairly. From the cost of our household insurance to the ability to hold our government and its institutions to account, good and bad decisions by the law reach us all in the end. The law seems removed because the archaic rituals and language of the court belie the fact that our system is a living thing. It deals with the most contemporary of problems, reflecting society back at itself. This is why everyone should have an interest in protecting what we know our justice system can do at its best. The law is human justice, designed and enforced. It will always, therefore, be imperfect. It makes mistakes, it is slow, sometimes chaotic, sometimes illogical. It cracks and at times crumbles, but it remains a pillar upon which our country is founded. Were it to break, the stability of our nation would break too, and we would all be the poorer for it. Did you know that the Institute of Arts and Ideas also has a podcast? Philosophy for Our Times brings you the biggest ideas from the leading thinkers around the world every week. Search for Philosophy for Our Times and subscribe today on your favourite podcast platform, SoundCloud or iTunes to make sure you never miss an episode.